Shalom. Today we're going to continue showing the theme parallels between the Song of Songs and the Book of Exodus. There is one more thought which remains an echo. Uh, we consistently see in Exodus that Yahweh is promising to take the people into a land of milk and honey, even from the beginning, Exodus 3.8. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. In uh, Song of Songs 4.11, we see thy lips on my spouse drop as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under thy tongue. And the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. The main comparison between the two books is the physical attributes and beauty of the bride compared to the physical building materials of the tabernacle. The first thing we see is the parallel grammatical construction between the name of the book, Shir Hashirim, the Song of Songs is the correct translation for these words, and it indicates that it is the best song among all songs. Similarly, you have a construction, Melech Hamlachim. This is the king of kings. He is the king over all kings. The Holy of Holies is called the Kodesh HaKodeshim, the holy place among all holy places. It's the most holy place and I think that is how it is translated in King James, the most holy place. And the rabbis acknowledge this. The book Song of Songs is obviously quite sensual and physical in nature, but it remains in the Bible. And so, as we said before, it is a parable of the love song between God and his people. This shows us, for one thing, the intimacy in the Holy of Holies, it is the most intimate place for communication with yud -Heh -Vav -Heh. Exodus 33:11. And Yahweh spake to Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. In Song of Songs, we see the intimacy in this way. Uh, chapter 1, verse 2. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is sweeter than wine. And again in chapter 1, verse 7. Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, where thou feedest, where thou makest thy flock to rest at noon. For why should I be as one that veiled herself beside the flocks of thy companions? I don't want to be a stranger with you. I want to be the intimate person with you without my veil. All the adornments for the Mishkan came from Egypt, as we see in Exodus 3.22. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor, and of her that sojourneth in her house, jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. In the building of the tabernacle, each person brought their many gifts to the tabernacle, Exodus 25, 3, and this is the offering which he shall take of them, gold and silver and brass. Exodus 25, 17 and 18, and thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubim of gold, of beaten work shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. And in verse 7, onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. The bride describes her beloved in terms of these physical items. Song of Songs, chapter 5, verses 11 through 15. His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. His eyes are as the eyes of doves by the rivers of water, washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet flowers. His lips like lilies, dropping sweet-smelling myrrh. His hands are as gold rings set with the barrel. His belly is as a bright ivory overlaid with sapphires. His legs are as pillars of marble. 
set upon the sockets of fine gold. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. Again in chapter 1, verse 2, Thy cheeks are comely with rows of jewels, thy neck with chains of gold. In chapter 3, verse 10, He made the pillars thereof of silver, the bottom thereof of gold, covering it, the covering of it purple, the midst thereof being paved with love for the daughters of Jerusalem. This a description of Solomon's palaquin or his litter. I know some places it's translated as chariot, but it's more like um, the, the carriage in which he is being carried. We see mention again of the of the crown that resembles the priest's crown. Song of Solomon three eleven. Go forth, O ye daughters of Zion, and behold King Solomon with the crown wherewith his mother crowned him in the day of his espousals and in the day of the gladness of his heart. In Exodus 29, 6, And thou shalt put the mitre upon his head and put the holy crown upon the mitre for the high priest. The curtains of the tabernacle are parallel to the curtains in Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 5, I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. We know that incense and anointing oil were very integral to the rituals in the temple, in the Mishkan, Exodus thirty twenty five. And thou shalt make an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be a holy anointing oil. Song of Songs 1-3 Because of the savor of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. Song of Songs 1-12 While the king sitteth at his table, my spikenard sendeth, sendeth forth the smell thereof. Again, speaking of the anointing oil and incense, Exodus thirty thirty four, And Yahweh said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spices, stactate and anica and galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each shall there be a like weight. In Song of Songs 3, 6, And the king sitteth at his table, my spikenard sendeth forth the smell thereof. And in chapter 4, verse 14, spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with all the chief spices. When we look at the menorah inside the holy place, we see that it has a lot of floral description about it. Exodus thirty-seven seventeen, And he made the candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work, made he the candlestick, his shaft and his branch, his bowls, his knot, and his flowers were of the same. There is much floral description in the Song of Song, chapter 6, verse 11. I went down into the garden of nuts to see the fruits of the valley, to see whether the vine flourished and the pomegranates budded. Chapter 7, verse 12. Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us see if the vine flourish, whether the tender grape appear, and the pomegranates bud forth. There I will give thee my loves. The showbread was to be baked weekly and set in the holy place. It was later eaten by the priests. This is reminiscent of the banqueting table. Exodus 12, 8, And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Of course, talking about the Passover meal. Exodus 29:33, And they shall eat those things wherewith the atonement was made, to consecrate and to sanctify them. But a stranger shall not eat thereof, because they are holy. In Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 4, He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. In Exodus, we see the sanctification of the wine, the use of the wine for the sacrificial rituals, Exodus twenty nine forty, and with the one lamb, a tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil and the fourth part of a hen of wine for a drink offering. Of course, there is much spoken of, of wine in Song of Songs, for example, chapter 4, verse 10. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse? How much better is thy love than wine? 
and the smell of thy ointments than all spices. Another interesting parallel is that things must be done at the proper time. The word moed, which means an appointed time, it's a, it's a specifically designated time. And the festivals we know are called Moedim. In Exodus 23.15, Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded thee in the time appointed of the month of Aviv. For in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. Similarly, the bride charges the daughters of Jerusalem by the rows and by the hinds of the field that ye stir not up nor awake my love till he please. God has a correct time for everything. The mercy seat in Hebrew is called the kaporet. Uh, this is an interesting word for a word study, which you can check out elsewhere on this channel. Is described in Exodus 25, 17. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. So the word kofar comes from the idea, in fact, covering for atonement, or we are covered by the blood of the animals and later of Yeshua. And so this word kofar comes directly into a transliteration in English, camp fear, which means henna, which is also something that is used to cover either the skin or the, the hair. You can uh, check out this video that will tell you more about that. Uh, Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 14, My beloved is unto me as a cluster of camp fear in the vineyards of En Gedi. So that's just a linguistic relationship there, but it reminds us. Finally, we see the, the description of the pomegranates that were used, Exodus 28, 33. And beneath upon the hem of it, thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem thereof and the bells of gold between them round about. The pomegranates are mentioned in Song of Songs, several places. Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet and thy speech is comely. Thy temples are like a piece of a pomegranate within thy locks. So this is a bit interesting. The word for temple uh, in Hebrew is something that is kind of, it's related to something that's beaten thin. And we know that the skin over the temple is the thin thin place. We saw that Yael was able to nail that tent peg in Sisera's head. And she chose that place. It's, it's a thin place. And so the picture of the pomegranate, when we crack the pomegranate open, we see the beautiful jewels of the pomegranate, but there's that thin yellow skin that covers it. And so I believe that that is why the temples are like a piece of pomegranate. Next time, we'll go on to the next book. In the meantime, Tasimit Ha'inayim Al Hashemayim, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.